In this video covering selection tools, we are going to be looking at the quick selection tool. It's used like a brush and you can control the brush's size and the hardness and you brush over the areas that you want to choose to tell the computer that this is what you want to work with. Sometimes you'll want that hard edge, and sometimes you'll want that softer edge, so you have that feathering effect that can sometimes make it easier to blend from one area to another. You can use the Add Raster Mask at the bottom to see what areas you've chosen. You'll see that it wasn't a very good selection there, so I'm going back in and using my brush and adding to it. Now, like most selections, you get a rough idea, and this is what I've got. There's some parts missing, and some parts I've got too much. So I fine tune within the mask option. And when I do this, I'm able to brush or paint areas in, or paint or brush areas out. When I use white, I add to my selection by using just the regular brush tool. I'm no longer using the quick selection brush, but the actual brush tool itself. I choose white, and now you'll see that I, as I'm brushing along her back, I've added areas there. I bring her foot into focus and her hand. There's a little bit more of the background as well, but I can go back and I'm going to fine tune that as well. Now I'm going to choose a black brush and remove the areas that I don't want. You'll see how I'm getting a little bit closer to the back, getting rid of some of that uh, haze along her back there. I want a harder edge. So I go in and I make sure it's harder. It was also a gray instead of a full black. So I went back and you can see that it's removing that little kind of blemish on her back there. I'll also go down around her feet and hands to remove some of that gray and then of course the reflection in the water. Now that's a, a much better overall look. Now I go to the crop tool because I just want this section. I don't want the entire canvas. And I choose the crop tool, drag the rectangle over her, hit return or the check up on the upper right, and then I save it as a PNG file. That PNG file preserves the transparency, and then I can go back and use just her image when I want to. Now I want to use this crouching girl in another image, so I bring it in, and that checkerboard in the back tells me that it's all transparent. So I can bring her in, and it's just going to be her. So I select all, I copy. I go to the other image that I've brought in, and I paste. Now she comes in too large, so I'll have to use the Edit, Free Transform, and shrink her down so that she fits better into the actual background. Now you want to grab it from one of the corners. If you grab it from the side, it's going to shrink it narrow. I need to use a magnifying glass to back out and go back to the file, or I'm sorry, edit and free transform. And now I can see the corners and shrink her down to make her the proper scale for this environment.
tight. Now she fits much better into the overall environment. Make her a little bit smaller. I'm changing the layer name because it's a good habit to get into. You'll also notice that she's free to be moved anywhere within the image. We can also go back to the transform and we can flip her so she's looking the opposite direction. We can rescale her again with a free transform. If you shrink her down more, she looks better. She's a little bit further back. So you have total control over this image. Bring her back to where I want to place her in this foreground in the lower right. Now, while this girl fits pretty good in the overall space, her lighting is very bright for where she is. So I want to tone that down so she fits a little bit better into the overall environment. We're going to look at some quick things that can help that. There's a curves adjustment layer at the bottom of the layers panel that I can choose. And you'll see that I can make these adjustments. This is controlling all of the image, but if I option click, it will go to just the layer directly below it. And so then this way, I control just the girl and not the entire image. On the upper right, that's where the brightness is. And I want to bring down her brightness because she's really quite bright in comparison to the overall picture. So I bring that down by controlling this line and putting different uh, points on it. Upper right is for the brights. Lower left is for the darks. So I've brought down her overall uh, brightness quite a bit. The arm is still very bright, but her face got too dark. So using what's called the dodge tool, I'm going to brighten her face a little bit. And then using what we call the burn tool, it will take down the brightness of that arm some. The burn tool is very, uh, very tough to work with at times because if you go too quick, if you have too high of an exposure, it leaves a, a very ugly mess on your hand. So you have to be very careful with how you do it. You see that I choose the highlights because it's a very bright area and I just kind of take the higher edge off of it so it's not so screaming white. This way she fits a little bit better into it. One of the things that always helps is a shadow and she's lacking a shadow right now so I'm going to do a quick and dirty shadow to kind of give her a little bit of grounding but also to give her a little bit more of a um, overall standing out there. Okay, so I make a new layer that I'm going to put the shadow on. I grab a black brush, and that's what I'm going to use to paint the overall shadow. I need to make sure that the girl is directly below the adjustment layers there, otherwise it won't affect her. I don't want any of the selection tools. I want to go to the brush tool. And I'm going to use black. And again, I can use either a different size brush and then also a harder soft brush. This is going to be a pretty quick down and dirty shadow. Since she's on the layer above, I can paint behind her arm and it's not going to affect it. 
trying to get a general shape that looks believable. I'm not looking for perfection, but just something to give her some grounding. I've gone a little bit off on some of the, the shadow, so I do want to come back in and erase some of it. Once I get it done, I want to drop the opacity, and it makes it a more believable shadow. I still have some fine-tuning to do, but it's not that dense, dark black. And when I'm done, she fits in the, the scene much better, and she also helps kind of highlight her against some of that lighter kind of um, earth that she's on.